Hi, my name is James Emerling. I'm a science education consultant at Oakland School in Michigan and also one of the Michigan Open Sciad field test facilitators. So um, many of our districts have been going remote this year. And uh, so I've tried to make things a little bit more accommodating for them, take some of the burden off those teachers by uh, adapting the materials to make them more appropriate for remote use. Uh, and one of the things that I've found in doing so is there are many ways in which um, our science materials can actually be uh, enhanced or improved uh, through technology. And um, these remote tools uh, are useful in this period in time, but are also useful, say, if uh, you have students that are absent or if uh, you might be absent for, for some period of time. So you've got some materials that are prepared and ready to go. And so this is just an example of what that might look like for our students and teachers. And so I decided to start with um, sharing lesson two of unit 8.6. So this is a copy of the teacher notebook here on the left and the student notebook here on the right. Okay, and so basically they have the same slides in them. So for example, um, as I'm facilitating, I would have my students open their copy of these slides and they would be able to follow along. And so they would see my slides on the screen uh, and we would discuss them as we went along. So notice here slide A. Well, they have slide A in theirs as well, okay? But notice that slide, uh, following slide A, they uh, will record their own data. So this is uh, where the kids might record. In this case here, it's a progress tracker, right? Well, notice in my teacher document, I don't have that progress tracker there. Instead, I have uh, a look back at our class timeline. So the, the, these, um, slide shows, they go along with one another, but they are not the exact same. And so, uh, but they can reacquaint where they are by the letter in the upper right hand corner. So slide B is the same as slide B in this student file. Slide C is the same as it is in the student file. Okay. I've also had to make some accommodations for some of this. So here's slide D, but make some accommodations for remote learning. And so um, you know that we can't just sort data strips if we're doing it in a remote fashion. And so we had to make it in a uh, Google spreadsheet. Um, and the Google spreadsheet is more the way a scientist might look and organize, look at organize data or even um, analyze that. Right? And so this is a great tool for getting them acquainted for that and helping students then begin to organize their data using a spreadsheet. And so, uh, so this was one accommodation that needed to be made. Now, following that then, so students have those same slides in, in their presentation, but again, there's these blanks that are left in here for students. And so after they've made their copy of the data, uh, in the spreadsheet, they would want to uh, copy the address of where their uh, spreadsheet is located and paste it here so that they can reference it later. Continuing on, following their use of the spreadsheet and determining how those uh, data sets might be organized uh, and pat looking for patterns and how the uh, penguins might be related or connected, I guess. Um, the next sheet then asked them to make to uh, organize stickers. And so again, in the student uh, copy, this is what it looks like. And so students then could just drag these stickers around and group them any way that they wish, right? They can change these uh, annotations to describe why they grouped them the way that they did. And they can change the uh, these larger squares as well to, excuse me, to begin to um, organize these different groups. Okay, and they can move them around and such. And essentially, so uh, for example, let's go ahead and uh, just skip ahead to say um, slide Q. So I'm gonna do that in both the student and the teacher. So notice slide Q is the same, but in the student uh, copy, they have a place then to record their new questions. 
And then as a class, we can talk about those new questions. And if it were something that we we're going to record in the class, then this would be visible and you would be able to record those ideas. It would say our class new, our class's new questions. Um, in this slide deck, it's not built. Uh, there aren't any examples of that, but uh, in slide deck one for lesson one, there is. Um, and I believe that is uh, all I need to share with you at this moment. So hopefully you'll find this useful. Um, and again, it won't be perfect. So go through and take a look at it. Make sure that the language in the slide notes is appropriate for you. You could probably go through and take out these uh, teacher slides in here that are labeled with letters uh, for the students um, and just give them instructions as you go along. Or you might even use this as a uh, asynchronous tool, giving kids certain amounts of this to do between class periods. And then when you meet, they can initiate that discussion with some knowledge based on what they figured out on their own. So um, again, I think that these are great tools beyond this current period in time. And so uh, it'd be great if you took a look at them and let me know what you think.